Welcome back, friends, to Years in Review, the episodic show where I look back on years in history, starting from the year 1 AD to our current year of 2022. I'll be going over important events anywhere from births to wars to deaths and many other things in between that have gone on in our history. Now that I am fully done with my college finals, I can pump out videos faster than your stepdad pumping into your mom. This video will cover the years 6 to 10 AD, and boy, are they some juicy ones. Let's begin. Let's take a look at our boys, the Romans, and things are starting off poorly for them with a major fire in Rome ruining most of the city. Uh, this causes big boy Augustus to develop one of the first firefighting groups in history called the, the Vigils. Side note, for a while now, I've been calling him Emperor, which he is. He is, he is an Emperor, but at the time he was called Princeps, which means First Citizen. It's basically a humbler way of saying he has all the power. Double side note, the title Caesar will later on mean emperor and shape the Western world's ruling system with emperor being the English translation of Caesar. Uh, for the Germans, it's pronounced Kaiser, and for the Russians, it's Tsar. But they all mean Caesar, just with a new coat of paint. Things continue to go bad for the Romans with a then food shortage, causing Caesar to remove all of his slaves from Rome to save on food. He also puts the city on food rations to help save on food consumption. This is a big year for the Roman administration because Caesar also set up a treasury where he uh, can better manage his money. He uses this kind of as a big piggy bank for his legionnaires with a slight tax to help pay off all of his armies. The temple of Castor and Pollux, who are twin sons of Zeus, was also heavily damaged in that fire. And it was rebuilt and renamed to the Tiberius Temple due to Big T kind of leading the charge to save that temple, to rebuild it and stuff. So... Ooh, let's return to our family drama sitcom because just one year into his adoption, Agrippa Postumus is banished from Rome by a big Augustus due to him being a big disappointment. He gets sent to the island of Plancinasia, which is right off the coast of western Italy. Okay, let's do a little shift over to Tiberius where he is now back at it again, killing barbarians. He set up his HQ fortress in the modern-day West Baden, uh, Big T proceeds to use this fortress for his campaign against the barbarians. Sadly, for the Empire, this isn't the only issue it faces this year. The Illyrians, which is modern-day Balkans area, have had it up to here with Roman rule, and they have announced the Bellum Batorium, a.k.a. the Great Illyrian Revolt. Big T continues his seemingly 10-year-long campaign of rebel crushing and fights off this rebellion. A newcomer to the channel, Gaius Severus, is made governor of Mosia, which is modern-day Serbia, and works closely with Tiberius to quell this uprising. In other empire news, King Herod, whose side note was the husband of Glaphyria from last episode, is kicked out of Judea for being a bad king, and Glaphyria takes this chance to marry base Juba, also from last episode. She has been ch cheating on Herod with Juba all this time. Uh, the uprising was led by Judas of Galilee, uh, not, the, not the Judas, him and his rebel zealots were crucified, and this was the start of the zealot movement, which propelled the, uh, Judaism into becoming a major religion. The Great Bellum Batonium is still going on during 7 AD, and in 8 AD, it, it kicks up to an even bigger notch when the Illyrians suffer a major defeat to Tiberius in Dalmatia, which is modern-day Croatia. Um, but they still fight on. Let's do a little shift over to family drama time, because Caesar can't catch a break because... He now has to exile his eldest granddaughter, Julia the Younger, who had an affair with a Roman senator. She was supposed to marry a notable Roman figure named Lucius Paulus, who's only really known in history for having been executed for his plot against Caesar Augustus, which happens later on. So I guess she dodged a bullet there, um, but she was still banished to the island of Tremurus off the coast of Italy for the rest of her life. Man, I don't know what it is with Caesar and banishing disappointing relatives to islands, but shit, his dynasty probably wouldn't have died after five emperors if he kept his family close. Sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, and it's a little bit of a spoiler warning, so let's head back to 9 AD. Uh, the Germanic tribes have taken advantage of head honcho Tiberius being needed elsewhere, and have ambushed Publius Varus and his three legions. Leading the barbarians is Arminius, who leads the Cherusci, who are now no longer friends of Rome. Varus commits Roblox offing uh, in shame. This year marks the end of the Bellum Batonium when Tiberius crushes the final Illyrian resistance. To round out the decade, Roman senators passed the law Senatus Consultum Cilianum, 
This law allows the torture of slaves who are murdered by their master. Yikes, that's a Roe v. Wade style of take. A.K.A. bad. This year has some good stuff, though, with Jesus visiting Herod's temple for the first time and the exiled philosopher Ovid making Tristia the Third, which is a collection of poems talking about the sadness of being banished. It's a really good piece. Uh, he also wrote Ebus, which is a poem cursing the Romans for banishing him. has a lot of potty words in that. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Now, let's move across the world and talk about our train wreck of a time in China. Unfortunately for our boy Ping, he died at the age of 14 because he got the sniffles. Big brain, Wang Mang, names Ruzi Ying as the new Han Emperor. The kid is only two and is the last surviving member of the legendary Han Dynasty. The Liu clan doesn't like the power that Wang Mang has and starts a, to formulate loads of rebellions to stop him. This goes on for f far too long, and one year later, in 7 AD, the governor of the province of Dong, don't laugh, names Lu Zen Emperor and declares war on Han China. Wang Mang crushes this rebellion and then, a, and then with a total left field move says fuck off to Ruzi and names himself Emperor and declares a new Zen dynasty. Renaming Han China to Zen China. Ruzi Ping is placed under house arrest and named Duke of Diang, ending his two year stint as Emperor. Big Brang, Wang Mang, uses infinite knowledge and bans the private use of crossbows, which can now only be exclusively used as a part of his army. He's a genius, what can I say? This Zen dynasty will last forever with Wang in control. Now, let's move on to baby time. For these five years, we've had some notable births that include John the Apostle, Marcus Lepidus, who's future husband of the Emperor Caligula's sister, Melonia Caesonia, uh, who's future wife of Caligula, uh, the Mad Emperor Nero was also born in 6 AD, uh, Julia Livia was born in 7 AD, and she would later marry Nero. Um, for 8 AD, we have Drusus Caesar, who will be named Tiberius' heir and be his main general for a long-ass time. Future Emperor Vespasian was born in November of 9 AD. He'll be important in like 30 episodes, so well, he's, he's more of a long con. The year 10 AD is kind of a big year for births with Hero of Alexandria. He is a Greek engineer who made the first vending machine, the force pump, which is a fire starter, and a lot of other things that are revolutionary for his time. Pope Linus was also born this year. He wasn't Pope in the sense that we now view Pope, because the Romans kind of persecuted the Jews and the Christians, but he was a Christian leader for his time. Future puppet emperor of China, Liu Penzi, rounds off the birth lists for these five years. All right, now let's talk about deaths. Ordices III, who is briefly king of Persia, dies like a nerd because he was killed by the people who installed him as king because they didn't like how he ruled. And sadly, shortly into her marriage with Big Juba, Princess Glaphyria porked too much and too hard, and she died. Okay, guys, that wraps up years 6 to 10 AD in history. Please leave a like and a subscribe because it really means a lot and it helps motivate me to do more of these. Please let me know in the comments how long you think our man Wang Mang will be emperor. He has rebels all around him right now, and I don't know if banning crossbows will stop that. I hope all of you have a great-ass day and have a great break for all my fellow students out there. This was Years in Review. This is Matt of the Anovis Channel with 2012 years to go.